So this is going to be a multi-part series. For those of you that are learning to ride, I hope us breaking it down like this and showing it to you incrementally helps you and makes a bit more sense. Feel free to skip around. I'll be sure to drop links to all the episodes in the description down below. Big thanks to Samuel Harley Davidson for letting me go through the course and film it so that it helps you guys that are looking to learn to ride motorcycles. All right, guys, so while the students here are taking their test, I thought we would just do a quick overview. Obviously, we're not able to go over everything that happened in the class because that would be the longest video ever. So John here is just going to do like a real quick recap of everything that we covered. Over the course of the class, you know, we teach the class like everybody's a novice. Um, even if you've had 20 years experience, even if you've been riding dirty for five years, we treat it like everybody's a novice. I'm not a cop, so I don't care if you've been riding dirty. I'm just happy you're here. What we're doing is we're teaching you the basics. So we go over the very basic things, parts, controls, you know, in the first day. Then day two, we're mostly going over the strategies for riding, you know, what you're looking out for. That way, when you are out in the real world, you kind of have an idea of what to look for before it happens. The riding is just as important, you know, because that's actually the part that you're doing. So we cover kind of all the bases, we cover the what ifs, you know, different strategies on what to do when you're riding and where you should be thinking and making sure you're concentrating on everything that's going on around you. So yeah, if you guys want more information, check out the link down in the description below. So they, they pretty much have the entire MSF book, like the handbook that we're using in like PDF format online. So you guys can basically look at exactly what we're using here. There's all kinds of good information in this book. This is good, you know, even after you finish this class, look through it and go, well, you know, how am I supposed to take that curve or what's a good strategy for doing this? Use this as a reference guide. Oh, yeah. It'll help you out. Been riding for 16 years and I still look at this thing sometimes and go, how am I supposed to do that? <laughs> you, know, you develop bad habits as you've been riding. Awesome, man. Well, next part, we're on the bikes. What Don't doing? Start the... riding. Heck yeah. yeah, man. He's going to begin braking once he passes these cones right here. Where he stops, I'll place a cone. Then he'll go back. Run number two, you guys are going to guess where he's going to stop with a one second delay. So, one second after he passes those cones, I'll stop him. Your cones are gonna kind of base where you think that stop's gonna be at, all right? Hey, I'm pretty good, huh? There you go. <laughs> so, that was at run number one. Now, with a one second delay, put your cones kind of lined up with mine, where you think he's gonna be stopping at. with a one second delay, right? Grab your cones, now he's gonna do it at 25 miles an hour. Threshold braking is braking right before you produce the skid, or ABS or anything kicks on. All right, 25 miles an hour with a one second delay. Section where John should have stopped. Where's John at? The middle of the intersection. Somebody's hood ornament, right? It's at 25 miles an hour with a one second delay. What's one second to somebody? Did I turn my stove off? Hey, look at that car that just passed by me. Did you start daydreaming. Where do we know roads are 25 miles an hour? Residential, right? Everywhere else is what? 35, 45? Highways anywhere from 50 to 70. So again, this is John doing, trying to do threshold braking. Threshold braking is just enough brakes right before you produce a skid. Begin your braking, just progressively more brake pressure until you come to a stop. You can stop faster with threshold braking than you actually can with ABS. You have a U-turn box and a serpentine. One at a time, we're gonna call you into the box. Past the first green, when you get to that second green, clutch in, turn your head, turn those handlebars, and make a left-hand turn. About three quarters of the way through that turn, start easing that clutch out to build that momentum to 
carry you through the rest of that turn. You're gonna go diagonal across, back to that first green cone you passed, and make a right hand turn. From there, you guys have a serpentine that you're gonna do. Just like the offset weave we did yesterday. You're turning your head, clutch in, turn the handlebars, then ease that clutch out. You're looking to the future. As you get to them, look at the next set. When you get to the second set, look at the third set. You're just gonna ride around, do the clutch control lanes as slow as you can go. All right, guys, for your static demo for this, we're gonna leave it on the side stand, turn the handlebars all the way to the left, put our feet on the pegs, okay? Key to a good U-turn, it's head turn and handlebar movement with the friction tip, okay? We call it kiss your passenger. The better your head turn, the better your U-turn will be. If you look up front, the bike is leaning a little if I'm making my turn. My body is upright. I'm using pressure on my opposite foot peg to counterbalance my weight. As I'm turning, what I do is, as I come into my turn, remember we don't use the front brake because our handlebars are turning. It's the back brake. I pull my clutch in as I'm turning. As I'm coming out of my turn, I slowly start letting the clutch back into the friction zone to upright the bike and get it to move again. Okay? If you ever gotta put a foot down or feel like you gotta put a foot down, Ease that clutch back into the friction zone and the bike will think it's gonna go again and you won't have to put your foot back. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and turn the bikes on and we're gonna do some group rocking. So get it into neutral, on. We're just gonna be relearning that friction zone since this is the first time on the bikes since yesterday. So into first, on the heels, letting clutch out, flat foot, pull clutch back in, rock it back. Rinse and repeat. Clutch out, friction zone, catch it, push it back. Clutch out, back in, push it back. Just relearning that friction zone. All right, here we go. All right, so we're starting out at the cones down here and we're basically going to be, just as they said, going into the box. We're gonna be doing a figure eight and then after the figure eight, we come out of the box, we go through the little S curve. So the biggest key to this guys is exactly what they said. You want to look where you turn. We did that a little bit yesterday with some of the weaving in and out of the cones, but with this, like you really need to look where you're going and trust that the bike is going to turn with you. You can see he's looking where he's going. He stayed inside the line. He's going to the other end of the box. He's gonna turn the other direction. So you see that at first he wasn't looking, he was looking where he was thinking he was gonna go and it kind of got a little shaky and then he pushed through that and went where he needed to go. So you want enough momentum that you don't put your foot down but you want enough speed but you don't wanna go so slow. Boop, bam, perfect. Look where you're going. I am. Just nailed it. Thank you. Jump. Looking where I'm going. Looking where I'm going. All right, good. All right, I'm gonna go like as slow as possible. It's like having a slow race. <laughs> All right. Now I'm gonna do it a little bit faster and that'll probably be the last cut of us doing this one. See if we can get a little bit tighter this time. Look where you're going, look where you're going, look where you're going. The left. Bam. Going right. Woo, <laughs> Got it. And last time on this, the uh, serpentine, as he called it. Looking at the orange, going through the green. Woo! Tried to cut a little hard there. Still recovered, no foot down. Slowing back down. All right, and back to staging. So 
if you have to put a foot down, what's that telling you? A little more momentum. Not necessarily speed, but maybe let that clutch out a little bit. Maybe a little more RPMs. Remember, it's a give and take with that clutch and throttle. Turn your head, turn those handlebars, counterweight. Put that weight on that outside foot. The objective, to stop in a curve. So you're gonna ride through the curve, pull in your clutch, start applying the brakes, nice and easy, and come to that nice smooth stop. Then you're gonna go diagonal crossed to the next set of large cones. Do the same thing, call you down, ride through the curve, clutch in, a little bit of brake, nice smooth stop with your front tire between the green cones. Part one, ride through the curve, clutch in, start applying those brakes with that nice smooth stop between the green cones. All right, here we go, through the turn and braking. Skirt. Like you, like you know what you're doing. Yeah, right? right? <laughs> So yeah guys, whenever you're coming through a turn and you're needing to brake in order to like not lose control of that momentum and your balance, use both brakes together and then the rear brake is going to help you an absolute ton. So this time around, I'm going to try and basically start to apply brakes a little bit later. Yeah, we're basically like accelerating through the turn, stopping between the green. All right, one more time. Trail braking. Skirt. All right, so we're doing the same thing, but to the right this time. Skirt, come up, bam, and rinse and repeat. All right, guys, so in this one, we are acting like there is a car that is basically stopped on the intersection, and instead of going through the turn, we're basically emergency braking and going out of the turn. So, turning here. Oh, sh <laughs> There's a... Right? And now we're doing it the other direction. So I don't know if you guys heard, but in that turn, I basically came out of it and I actually locked up, engaged the ABS. So we're turning. Oh, sh swerve out, stop. Boop. So one of the things with braking is that the front brake is responsible for 70% of your stopping power and the rear brake down here is responsible for 30% of your stopping power. So whenever you have both of those combined, right before you're locking up the brakes, you have the most amount of stopping power. We're coming left, oh sh right? Slowing down, good to go. So right, like, right to jam on front brake, it stops a good amount. If I jam on back brake, it takes a little longer to stop. But if I jam on both of them together before like locking them up, right? You want to be able to do that without locking them up because then you lose control unless you have ABS. If you have ABS, you're still able to stop quicker without locking up or engaging ABS. Basically apply both of them at the same time here. See, much faster stopping. Same thing right here again, watch, I'll do it again. See, much, much better. Use both brakes. So the objective is to improve skills for negotiating multiple curves to enforce cert setup smooth. That's the range setup. You got a circuit, you got in second gear. Once you're in second gear, leave it there. You're gonna speed up on the straightaway. Both brakes, off the brakes, look and press. Remember, slow look, press roll. If you find that you're going a little too fast, use that rear brake. All right, guys, so I'm gonna be following Juan here. He's got the sticker on the back of the helmet. Good placement, good game, sir. Basically, we're going to come out and hit this curve on the straightaway. We're going to get into second gear, leave it in second gear. Once we're in second gear, our left hand goes around the grip so we're not messing with the clutch. We're going to speed up on the straightaway, hit the brakes a little bit before our curve, lean the bike, just follow that circuit and ride on through. Awesome. All right, so this is pretty much just like acclimating yourself, getting in turns and stuff. Woo! <laughs> He's scraping. Once again, through turns, you, you want to look where you're going. Like, so they always say, look through the turn. So I'm looking through the turn here. You guys are paying attention to like where he's looking, where he's got. See, he's looking up and through the turn. You want to speed up through this section, trail brake, slow back down using that rear brake. Coming back through the turn, looking where you're going. And we're going to reverse now. All right, so we're down in first. Now we're in second. And we're going right. 
speeding it up. Trail braking, slowing down, going around. Leaning, looking where we're going. Trail braking, slowing down, leaning through the turn, looking where we're going. Taking a little chicane. Left, right, right, left. Now they say you need to go fast through that portion because between the cones needs to be less than a second. There you go. That's what you're doing. There you go. What was important? Taking your speed off, you know, getting the habit of using both brakes. You're not looking at the speedometer to get a feel for how you're going. Just like your car, you just know. You're starting to feel that. You're starting to really talk with the motorcycle. Turn your head, lean with the motorcycle, all right? You're pressing. Don't try to turn, press and you know, be one with the motorcycle. I hope the video was helpful. If it was, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Hitting that like button helps the channel a lot. And if you have any friends out there that are looking to learn to ride as well, be sure to give it a share. If y'all enjoy motorcycle content, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon as well, so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. And until next time, you guys ride safe out there, stay vigilant, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.